Hello, everyone. Hello, and uh, welcome, welcome back to another exciting day. Another exciting day here on Adobe Live. That's uh, your your one stop for hanging out, doing some excellent creative streams, and uh, you know just learning a lot about about what you can do here in the creative cloud. So I'm Evan Abrams. I'll be taking you through how to how to animate a how to animate a scene, how to continue on with our project from yesterday where we took assets out of Illustrator and, uh, and get them into, into After Effects. A little bit of an oopsie on the schedule there. It was a little bit premature. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll be, uh, we'll be getting in, getting in, <laughs> getting into some cool stuff. We were having some streamer chat uh, here on the here on the chat on Behance Live. If you are watching this, if you're watching this on YouTube, please come over and join us on behance.net slash live so I can see your chat, so I can see what's going on. We've got some new RGB lights behind me. I don't really know if I care for these, but uh, you know, it's a fun DIY project and uh, such a variety of things. So yesterday, yesterday we went, uh, <laughs> we, we went in with uh, dissecting a scene in Illustrator and then we brought it into After Effects. Today, we're gonna to continue on with that. We're gonna work in After Effects to create more generative things <laughs> on Behance.net. Um, but here, here on Behance, we have so many great things to get into, so many wonderful things going on. Um, let me just pull up the schedule, which I did a little bit prematurely at the start. After, after me on here, Evan Abrams, that's me. We are going to be hanging out for a, a daily creative challenge with uh, Jesus. He's going to be challenging you to make some decorations in Photoshop. I could use more decorations around here. I don't think the RGB lighting is going to cut it. Then we're going to get into some hand lettering, some excellent hand lettering with Steffi, uh, Steffi Lynn. Uh, wonderful hand lettering in fresco. You're going to love that. Um, and then an Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge with Paul Tranny. Um, and then we've got some XD, the block of XD. I see a lot of love for XD in the chat. So if you want to get deeper into that, then uh, mobile app design and the Creative Challenge with uh, a couple of Andreas, uh, Marquez and uh, Epi hanging out. And then finally wrapping up our day with some doodle therapy, bringing it down, having a chill vibe with some doodle, set, doodle therapy. So please, please do stick with us. Uh, be, be around and... Uh, and have a chill time. So we're going to continue yesterday's chill time here uh, here with me, getting you started in After Effects. If you have any questions, please let me know in the chat. Again, I'm going to be checking the chat on behance.net slash live. So come over and, uh, and enjoy that if you're watching on the YouTubes. But let me do a quick recap of what we did yesterday and where we're going today. And then we will try to get there. This is a getting started uh, in After Effects. This is sort of a beginner focused stream. So hopefully, hopefully everything on here uh, is going to be great. Uh, and if, like I said, if you have any questions, if we're going too fast, let me know. We'll slow it down just so we can get everyone on board. So let's just go ahead and dip into what's on my screen at the moment. Have a look here. It's mountains. This is where our journey began. We started yesterday on Adobe Stock, hooking ourselves up with uh, this wonderful, wonderful bit of vector art uh, from, from Maria. Uh, two, two eyes in Maria there. Uh, so if you want to go and grab yourself that to, to play along, please do. But then we took these assets, we brought them into Illustrator, we carved them up, we extended them. So we, we, we broke everything up into its constituent parts so that we could have a lot more of the illustration to play with, right? The, the original was only in this box and we need more. We've got to have more. Um, and so then we went from here, we went from this space, and then we eventually came over into, into our day one, our day one work here. And then we set things in motion. So now we can enjoy 
watching these things move and show up and, and animate on. While we enjoy looking at yesterday's work, uh, I want to say hi to everybody in the chat who's hanging out. Good good to see you back, Karebi. Good to see you, Sean. <laughs> Celia's got to go stream, so she's she's only sticking around for the first little bit, I suppose. <laughs> That's cool. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's going to be great. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's going to be a great time out here. We've got we've got Jay back. Felix is back. Oh, man, we got uh, people from Pakistan. Let me know where you're from. Let me know what you do. It would be great to know where in the world you are and what you're doing with After Effects. Um, <laughs> so, you know, hopefully that's great for everyone. Uh, it's so good to see people coming back to this, coming back for day two. And, of course, our, our mod holding it down, the best in the business, Tim Mobest. So, you know, always, always good to see you on here, Tim. And uh, Tim always cracks me up with his puns in the chat so i will i will attempt to keep a straight face keep it together and uh yeah oh yeah also let me know you know it's uh I, people have a lot of interesting names around the internet so please do let me know if if uh you prefer a different handle from other platforms you know, people from india people from the the wild plains of phoenix brazil representing this is fantastic okay so this is what we did yesterday this was where we got to and everything you see here is just manipulations moving around, translating, pushing a camera through. It's all moving through assets that were already made in Illustrator. So today, we're gonna kind of take the next leap. We're gonna take the next step. I could just leave this. I could just leave this playing. Um, hey, um Umicorn, back again. Back again. Good, good to see you hanging out in the afternoon. Oh man, my panel is a bit flat today. Oh no. I don't know. I don't know how to fix that. Um, I don't know. If it's distracting, Tim, you let me know. <laughs> no, you're getting in my head now, Tim. Uh, <laughs> okay, so here's what we're going to do. We are going to start to generate some stuff in here to add a little bit more visual interest. We are going to try to manipulate these objects in a little bit more nuanced ways. There are three main things that I want to get to uh, today. There are three big, big things. I want to make the stars twinkle, might even generate totally different stars. I want to make the trees sway in the wind. We want to get those swaying back and forth. And then, then I would like to make the fog here the fog or the or the maybe it's steam or mist um uh, you know what i want to do um we're gonna get everything everything going on uh, over here so let me just make sure boop, we can enjoy getting my face out of the way so because we're going to be touching the effects panel a fair amount we aren't going to be doing any typography so i can just close these typography panels down here we don't need those so one thing I'm going to say is that we want to we want to set up our interface so that there isn't too much stuff going on. So that's why we're going to clear out some things, and we might we're going to drop in some effects in the effects and presets panel. If you don't see yours, go up Window Effects and Presets. You'll find it there. But we're going to be touching a whole bunch of tools, so you're going to love it. You're going to love it, I'm sure. Okay, so where do we begin? Um, I want to start. Um, generating this fog. Now, the fog currently, if we have a look at this fog, is literally just a shape that's being pushed across, right? We're just pushing this shape over. Looks pretty cool, actually. Look, looks all right as it is, but I think we can do a little bit better. So let me give you a little preview of where I want to take this and some of the ideas I want to get into. So as you can see, twinkling stars up here at the top. We've got our We've got our fog kind of rolling by here, a little bit more wispy fog. We're gonna make that uh, some foggy bottom fog going on. And we've got some swaying happening in the trees. So these are the three kind of big things that I wanna to touch on today. And it's going to be an interesting exploration. So if you've never opened up, if you've never opened up After Effects before, don't worry, we're gonna, we're gonna go slow and we're gonna to try to get where we want to go. Okay, so, Step one in creating the fog. 
we know that this is going to live in 3D space. We know it kind of has to be fairly large. So what I'm gonna do is create, I'm gonna be creating something that is large enough to fill in this space and kind of be reused and remixed around the spot. So I'm gonna start by creating a new composition. And ordinarily, you may be used to creating compositions that are simply, you know, from the drop down here that are like HDTV 1080, you know, the size of an output. But we're making components now. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this kind of an irregular height. I'm going to make this maybe 540 tall. And it's going to be sort of how wide? How wide do you think this is going to need to be? Well, let's just go ahead and make it 3000 pixels. <laughs> Huge. Huge mungus. Uh, and this is going to be, let's see, let's see, the duration. Let's see, this is 10 seconds of animation. So let me just go ahead and make it, say, 30 seconds long, right? Because we are going to be sort of going all over the place uh, with this thing. We want to be able to move it around in time and in space. So we're making it larger than we need. We're making it longer than we need. And uh, let's get to it. So I'm going to hit OK here. But first, let's rename this. Let's call this the fog bank. Or I mean, I already have one of those. Let's go. Let's go foggy time. We're going to call this one foggy time so that I can keep them all straight. Um, and here we'll just get these clean this up. So <laughs> how wide should it be? Yes. So now we have this irregular rectangle. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to go new solid. And solids are are very good at, oh, hello, hello, PD from Spain, Spain. Patricia, good to see you. Um, a team representing out here with the weekend crew. So I'm gonna create a new solid. Just to show you how we do that again, we can right click in the space, go new solid. You can go layer, new solid, or you can use your command uh, shortcut in here. And uh, we're just gonna go ahead, generate that solid. And we want to make it the size of this comp. So we're just going to hang it out, hang it out there. It's going to be the same size as this composition. Boop. Makes this big, wide rectangle. Now, before I go any further in here, here in the day one example, I'm just going to take these misty elements and I'm going to, we're not going to look at them anymore. Um, so the mist is gone. And uh, <laughs> reverb mic. Thank you for doing me a solid. Uh, and now I'm going to take foggy time and I'm going to bring foggy time out here. We have this nice large rectangle out in the space. I'm going to make it three dimensional. And the first thing I want, I want to call attention to here is when I click making it three dimensional, notice that it jumps. Okay. Now it's jumping because when things become three dimensional, we're seeing them through the camera. So right now we're not seeing it through the camera's perspective. We click here and now it's sort of part of that 3D world. So this is where it lives three dimensionally. So we would like it to be sort of at the same position as this first mist bank here. So what I can do is I can just call open this thing's position. I'm not really interested in the X or Y. It's the Z position that I'm really keen on in pushing this back so that it lives sort of in front of this mountain. So let me call up its position. So as long as the fog bank doesn't push through there, I should be good. So I'm gonna move this right around here maybe. I'm gonna to try to position it down here and I might even just scale it up a little bit. So let me just hold down shift while I scale to make it a little bit bigger and it'll live somewhere down here. Now, great fog, right? I think I, think I really nailed it and we can probably call it here, right? Um, <laughs> this is perfect. Uh, no, 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 no. I like to work this way so that I can put the thing in position and then we can enter this, this pre-comp here, we can enter into the foggy time composition, make things foggy, go back and check it, and it's already in the place where we want it to be. We're gonna go through, we're gonna go through a few different iterations, a few different modes, a few different ideas around making fog, and hopefully they coalesce into something that you can apply to your projects. Um, we're gonna touch a few different ideas, and uh, I think it's gonna be great. Mm. Yeah, Tim, let's start, let's start with, uh, start with something different. Now, uh, Reverb Mike has a good suggestion here to alt drag to replace the old fog, right? Which ordinarily is a great idea if we're replacing one for one with the assets. Um, 
Now, the one thing uh, that I'll say is that this fog is going to move itself. So we don't need the positional changes. We don't need all of the things there. This is going to be this going to be great. It's going to be wonderful. Uh, so here we go. So with this placeholder fog, I want to make this thing wavy, wee wee wee, wave wave wave. And so we can apply simply a wave warp to it. We're going to distort it with the wave warp. You can search your effects and presets by just typing into the search bar here. Close that down, just so we can see it again. Wave. Here we go. It's in the distort family of things. And in fact, there are many, many things in the distort family that I'm interested in talking about. But, 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 the one we want here is way down here is wave warp. Now, what we're going to do with the wave warp is just drag the wave warp out, and we're going to see what it does. Oh, it seems to have created uh, kind of waves. Hold on, let me just play this and see. I guess it's waves. I don't know. Maybe if I move the solid, no. Well, why, why is it not? Why is it not behaving well? Why is why is this wave warp being nasty to me? Well, what's happening, and I think a lot of beginners uh, may run into this, um, is that what we end up with here is that it's cutting off because it's trying to make waves at the alpha bounds of this layer, which in this case are the edge the edge here. So if we were to fill this with material, it would actually be making the whole layer wavy, right? But we only we only care about the edges being wavy. So here's a little, little trick. You can take a rectangle tool. We're going to draw a mask. So create the rectangle tool. And all we're going to do is just draw a mask around the middle of this thing. So there is still information above and below for the wave to deform. And now we have this um, lasagna noodle going on. Um, <laughs> so uh, let's see, let's see. <laughs> oh, uh, Dorina is asking, uh, does it make a difference if you drag an effect onto the screen, uh, onto the layer? So with this effect here, if I just drag it out somewhere, see, have a look here. Hopefully you can see the little, the little nope icon. Until you drag it over a layer, then it goes to the plus, right? Plus, nope, plus, nope. Or you drag it down here, plus, nope. So unless it's a plus, it's nothing's going to really happen. Now, um, the uh, Tim's got a good question. How do I know if something's a preset versus an effect? So sometimes when you search, like if I were to search in here for, what's something that's the same? Ven Venetian blinds, right? So Venetian blinds here is, this is a preset called Venetian blinds. This is a transition effect called Venetian blinds. Have a little look here. This little icon is a little bit different and you'll find that this little folder structure is found under animation presets, transitions, Venetian, transition, Venetian. So that'll hopefully clear that up. Um, so hopefully that's good. But we have this lasagna noodle out here. We need to start dealing with the wave warp until it becomes what we want. So let's increase the width quite a bit because we want rolling, rolling fog. Here we go. And let's increase the height a little bit like this. Now we've got some ghosts dreaming. We ghosts. So this looks kind of foggy, but it feels like the fog is not going the way we want. We want the air to be traveling from right to left like we were doing before. So we could just change the direction, change the direction around. Now it, oh yeah, it kind of feels like it's going in the opposite direction. Nice. And it's very regular. Okay, so foggy time. Let's go back to the day one example. And now we can enjoy, oh yeah, it looks like a, a fog is, fog's rolling through. Oh boy, this is a good abstract fog. We're nailing it. Uh, so maybe we would move this down. Maybe we would shrink it down a little bit. Um, get it kind of correctly into position how we want. But there we go, we've got this kind of river of fog uh, rolling on through. Now, let's try to maybe refine the fog a little bit more. So foggy time, maybe we adjust its transparency down a little bit in here. Cool, that's fine, as you can see. Feels a little bit fast, doesn't it? Doesn't it feel fast? Bacon fog, yeah, we've nailed it. We nailed it with our bacon fog. So I'm gonna take the wave speed and I'm going to bring the wave speed down. So let's say 0.2, right? Nice, slow, chill, laconic, 
Mm, fog time, yeah. Or maybe maybe 0.5 fog time. Maybe that's fine. But here's the next phase that I want to go to. I want to I want to take us to that to another level. Bacon fog is great, but let's add let's put a wave on a wave, right? Let's put a hat on a hat with this thing. And I'm going to take this wave warp and I'm going to duplicate it. So now we've got double wave warp. Now immediately what happens is you know, it's it's just making these existing peaks um, higher because we're they're exactly the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the wave width, take this down to 300. See now we've got we've got two compounding waves over top of each other, right? I'm going to take the wave speed and let's make this go. Um, let's see. Let's make the thicker waves go slower. Let's make this one go faster. So now we have some variety coming through the space here. And let's see, this one's going at 0.3, this one's going at 0.5. What I might do is alter the directions a little bit so we can get uh, some undulation happening through them. Okay, this is feeling feeling good here. Let's see, let's see, maybe this one here can go, what happens if this one goes at one? So there we go, now we've got some competing compounding waves kind of coming through, right? So these two things are interacting with each other, they're compounding on each other, and it's got a little bit more visual interest. It's still fairly regular and and regular, right? This is a regular, regular sines waves as it's rolling on through. So there we go. We've we've created kind of some abstract fog that is rolling on through. Boy, is it really rolling. So we might we might slow that down. Or here's an alternative if we simply scale this up, it's going to feel like it's going slower. So if we just drag this out to be longer, it's going to have the feel of going a little bit slower, right? Because it's it's just bigger. So we can adjust that in two ways. But let me just go ahead in here and let's see. Let's make this 0.1 really crawling, really crawling through. All right, so there we go. We're ba and yeah, Karebi, we're, we're adding two sine functions. Now, maybe you would prefer, um, I don't know, a different function, right? There, there are different wave types uh, that you can slam through this thing, uh, which are pretty cool. But this is kind of what we end up with, right? So hopefully that is fun and good. Now, if you find that you're bumping into the top, you can always bring this down with... Uh, with the edge of your mask, so you've got a little bit of control there. But these are both very regular, right? So we've got regular fog, we've got regular wave plus regular wave. We've we've remixed it up a little bit to get it a little bit wacky, but maybe, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to call this, let's call this uh, abstract one. You can always, because of the non-destructive nature of After Effects, you can keep adding things and then removing them, um, making more, duplicating, making others. Um, so I really recommend you take advantage of that kind of feature, right? That you would want to, um, that you would want to just make a bunch of layers, make a bunch of duplicates, try things out, experiment. That's kind of the fun of motion design, is of experimenting and remixing and creating interesting things out of basic components. So let's let's go ahead and make, make a second attempt at abstraction here. And that's just because we might go back, we might change our mind on some of this. So abstract form two, I'm going to add to this a turbulent displace. So turbulent displace is going to modify, it's going to modify this in a different way. So let me turn off those wave warps so that you can enjoy seeing what the turbulent displace does to this. Well, doesn't this look a lot weirder already, right? So with the turbulent displace on there, I can, I'm just going to clear those out. So with the turbulent displace, it's not moving anywhere, but certainly it looks more irregular than it did before. And we are able to increase the amount Right? We can really get this going, oh boy, so much that it starts to break apart a little bit. We can increase the size of this disruption. So we can end up with all kinds of interesting things. Now, how do we make this move through, right? How do we make this go through the, go through the situation? Well, there's a few different ways. We can alter the offset, which will make this go kind of left, left, right, up, down. We can basically 
move the, um, if you think about this like um, we're applying kind of a map, kind of a distortion pattern on top of this. And this pattern, we're now going to move that pattern around. Okay. So we're going to take the turbulent displace. We are going to keyframe the offset here. So I'm just going to call up that keyframe for the offset. And let's say we just begin it over here at this edge. And then by 10 seconds, that's how long our animation is. Maybe we just drag it over here to this edge. We can see how that's going. Yep, that looks pretty scrolly. Fine, I guess. And if we want this to be slower, then we can just drag this out to the end there, and then we can enjoy kind of how slow that's going out, right? It's a very realistic bacon fog situation. It's fantastic. Now, it's not really uh, changing over time, you would say, right? This is not, um, this is not altering or or getting getting weird out there. So let's change what we call the evolution. Now we can evolve what's happening. And evolution is basically changing some of the variables of the math that run this thing. And by stepping up those variables and keyframing them over time, for example, let's have this keyframe you know, as long as this thing keeps going, let's have this thing go as well. So we're doing three times around as this thing moves across. Well, what does that look like? Well, now it starts to look like this. So now we are getting some even stranger things happening. This is a little bit more ghostly, maybe a little bit more wispy. Maybe we're getting where we want to go, right? We're getting... We're getting close here. We're getting we're getting something. We're getting there incrementally, right? You can also combine these two ideas together, right? You could combine turbulent displace plus waves, right? There's nothing nothing in the book that says we can't do that. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to duplicate this and make abstract three. And abstract three, as we know, will just be a combination of what we did on number two and what we did on number one. And so now you can combine together all of the motions together, getting more nuance, more interest. Whoa, wowie zowie. Isn't this wacky? So hopefully that makes sense with some of what we can achieve by simply distorting this layer. Now, let's go through and have a look at if we like how this is behaving. So let's kind of see it in action down there. Okay, well, it's kind of rolling on by. Whoosh. Our vertical changes might be a little bit extreme, right? Because it kind of dips out of frame. But something I'm going to recommend that you do, since we want to have fog at these various different layers and positions, I'm going to take foggy time here, and we are going to duplicate it and kind of push it back in the space and see how this works, you know, at the different areas it's going to live, okay? So I'm going to duplicate foggy time, down here, and we're duplicating an instance of this composition, right? So there's only one foggy time prime, right? This is foggy time. We can see up here in the project panel, foggy time is being used twice here. And so we are gonna take foggy time and we are going to now move it. We're gonna move it back, 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 back down the stack to be above mountain B. But you'll notice nothing's changed about how it looks because we need to actually push this thing back here, right? So it needs to be back here behind one in front of the other. So now I might kind of scale this up, move it around a little bit. And because I don't want them to appear very similar, I'm going to shift this one in time. So I'm just going to grab that layer and see I'm shifting it in time here. Okay, now let's see how we like this where we can see kind of the two, the two fogs kind of going. And yeah, the, the mist is moving very fast. Maybe it's just a collection of ghosts. I don't know. But we'll, we'll, we'll refine it a little bit more. <laughs> mm. So we also need to duplicate this again, move it back into Mountain C, into this area. But again, we have to we have to push it back there. We have to grab its position and move it manually back there. Okay, so we're gonna move it over here, right? So we'll just scale that up maybe a little bit. Maybe you want to scale it down. I'm not sure. It really depends on 
on what you're doing and, and how you feel. So we're just going to do that. And maybe like here. Okay, that's good. And maybe we'll move it in time a little bit like so. So now we've got these sort of three kind of layers going through. Hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's see, let's see where to go next. We need the final layer, the final layer of fog. I have to duplicate it one more time to get mist in front of Mountain D back there. So I'm going to grab this. I'm going to grab this and push it back, push it back until it disappears. You can see it, that moment that it pops through, it disappears into that other mountain. And we are just going to drag this thing out back here so that we have kind of a large... Um, it really appears more like spirits at this point, so, you know... If you're, if you're like my parents um, and a bit more um, in tune with those things, then uh, then maybe maybe this has a bit more uh, meaning and interest. So so now we've got these kind of undulations happening. So we need to kind of think about um, sort of deal with. Uh, let's see. Let's see. We might need to refine some of these. We might even end up replacing them with sort of unique duplicates, right, um, of this stuff. But we're going to try to refine them such that it kind of works between all three of these, hopefully. Hopefully we can get it so that it works. Um, we've got some questions in the chat, though. Uh, Karebi would like to know about the fog 3D effect. Um, it's a little bit outside of what we're going to get into today. Um, so fog 3D, fog 3D is... Um, how to describe? So if I make a solid plump fog 3D on here, one of the weird things about fog, so we're talking about fog in two senses of the word, kind of, um, that the fog in, in one sense is talking about, we're talking about like, mist over the mountains. 3D fog is a different form, different kind of concept. Um, it's sort of like the way you can impact the draw distance of something like this thing is, oh boy, now I'm talking about draw distance. Um, <laughs> imagine if you will in a 3D world that it takes a lot of calculations to render the whole world around you, right? Imagine a very complex like video game, right? And the concept of the fog in a 3D environment is basically saying beyond a certain radius, beyond a certain point, we're not going to see anything. And in fact, we're going to cover that up with fog, fog in quotes. Um, but basically just things are going to get covered up with a solid color at a certain distance. So something that is, let's say, a thousand pixels away from me, that's when the fog bank starts. And then it, by 2,000 pixels away from me, that's when the fog bank is fully opaque. And then we no longer have to render the things that are beyond 2,000 pixels away from me, saving on engine time, making it appear like things aren't just popping into frame when they show up through that 3D plane. But that's that's my that's my quick and dirty explanation of the concept of fog in that context. Um, and I think that's part of it. So, however, today today we're not gonna we're not gonna we don't have any wacky stuff, any draw distance issues here. So we're going to just leave it, leave it be. That's something we usually get into in, in more hardcore 3D uh, troubles. But as I said, it's kind of a getting started zone. So, you know, we're going we're gonna to try to try to deal with this stuff. And I will say this, I'll say this, if you're, if you have questions about any effect that you find in the After Effects panel, right? If you have any questions about, like, what does this effect specifically do? After the good teams at After Effects have a beautiful help file, you gotta check out their help file. Um, check out uh, help. Check out that the help zone. Um, they dive into like every expression. They dive into like every effect. Um, it's it's all up there. You gotta check it out. I I really encourage you to check out those zones. Okay. Oh, but I'm oh I'm distracting myself from what is what is our core mission here. I want to show you. A third, a third more nuanced form of um, of fog, right? Because this is flat, <laughs> so flat, <laughs> so meh. Um, let's get into another form of fog that you might enjoy. Okay, let me go back into the foggy, foggy time, and let's try to make a fog. Let's call this um, a wisp. 
<laughs> I'm not. I'm never going to spell anything correctly ever in my life. But we're let's call this more um, gradient fog, or maybe let's call it fractal fog. Let's just call it what it is. Okay. Let's just let's stop. Let's stop with the pretext here, <laughs> and we're not going to generate the fog using these warpy things. No way. <laughs> Warps. I don't think so. I don't think so. Instead, we're going to make it with a noise. We're going to make some noise. So I'm going to create some noise and grain, fractal noise. I'm going to drag that out on here. Okay, pretty pretty great, Evan. You're, you've nailed it again. Way to go. Um, some fog on the water. So this fog, a little bit different, right? that we've created areas of darkness and lightness out here. Okay, interesting. Well, what, what do you want me to do about that? Well, well, okay, check this out. So even at its most basic settings, we won't dive into too much of this stuff, but we can make this a little bit more contrasty. We can transform this to scale up this fractal here so it gets a little bit larger like this. And you'll notice though that this, huh, these areas of distortion look they look really similar to the areas of distortion that we were having before, right? Because we're using sort of math to, oh yes, ah, we can push, push one thing kind of over the other here. This is interesting. Okay, we could perhaps transform the turbulent offset here. Let's transform the turbulent offset. Let's transform the evolution of this thing. Let me just hit the U key here and we're gonna call those up and we're gonna transform them over time just like we did with the turbulent displace. So this is gonna take a bit of a journey. This is going to evolve over time. These settings are the same. And look at this, look at this. As you scrub through, okay, that's interesting. It's changing over time. It seems to be moving over time. It's a little bit harsh on the edges at this point. So maybe we want to do something about that. Well, we've got a mask on it from before. Let me just hit the F button here, the F key, which will bring up feather, or you can twirl into the properties and we can feather that out and just feather that out a little bit. We end up with this kind of a fog bank rolling through. Okay, that's interesting, I suppose, but maybe we're going to clamp down on this just a little bit. And I think in the context of this piece, it should probably be a little bit blurrier, right? So we can make this blurry and, and less distinct by sort of bringing down the complexity if we want, right? Because that gets, that's getting us to be a little bit blurrier down here if we want. Um, we could also just start applying, um, start applying other, um, we, could, we could drop in like a blur on top of this. So we've got our fractal noise and I'm saying, you know, let's get a little bit blurrier here. So now we're getting into what I like to call effects sandwich time or effects stacking time. And what kind of blur? Maybe a, maybe a Gaussian, Gaussian blur. Someday someone will explain to me how that's pronounced, but we're going to bring that out on here. And we're going to get this even blurrier. As you can see, we can start to blur this out even more blurry like that. And uh, then we can we can say, let's definitely repeat the edge pixels. <laughs> we got uh, Pedro would like to see some levels out here, perhaps uh, to, to level this off because you could you might want to clamp. You may want to clamp these values. Right. So, you know, we can tweak the contrast here at a core level. If we want, we can tweak the brightness kind of at a core level here if you want to make it more more sparse if you want to make it uh, more full fog, right? Um, Gauss. Tim, that is great advice. Gauss rhymes with house. So this is a Gaussian blur. I'm going to say it like that from now on, and if anybody corrects me, I'm going to say that Tim said it. So problem solved. So here we go. We got this thing undulating and kind of moving through. Maybe let's increase the contrast. Let's bring the brightness down a little bit. Now, uh, there was a shout out for levels in, in the zone, so we could always drop some, um, mm, we could drop on here, like, like they said, a levels. So levels is a great way to clamp values, which I really love. Um, and if we just grab here, as you can see, we can start to make this 
a, a lot harsher, right? We get harsher delineation between between the areas of lightness and darkness. We can, you know, get really wacky, like if you want this kind of patchy look here. One of the ways that, that sort of this levels adjustment does fall down though, is you'll notice that the, the mask here is still gradiating what's going on, right? So what you might do instead, I know we're, we're deviating a little bit from my, my, my desire to keep this basic, but check this out. Let's go layer, new adjustment layer. Let's apply effects above everything. Let's put levels on that. What do you think of this, right? Oh, oh, look at that. It's respecting, it's respecting the alpha. Now, why is this happening? Why is this happening? Because we're only crunchitizing the RGB spectrum, okay? So this, this is why this is why this is this is a getting starting day. We're going too deep down the rabbit hole. If we want to if we want to get into that more, save it save it for another day. Right now we've got this fog rolling through. I'm kind of happy with this fog a little bit. <laughs> I know Pedro, we went to Tangent Town. Oh boy. And now as you can see, oh this this looks much more dire than I was hoping. This looks very unpleasant out here. Oh, there's all this all this weird stuff going on. Well, check this out. Foggy time. We, I'm going to click this button here, toggle switches and modes. I'm going to grab all these foggy times and we're going to change their mode. Their blending mode is going to be changed. We could change it to screen, for example. And now, as you can see, it looks like lovely little, lovely little moats just floating or floating along down there, having a great time. Um, and, and it's blending in, right? So, uh, hello, hello, uh, hello, hello to Joseph. Thanks for coming out, man. This is great. Um, and, and as you can see, with that little blending mode change, now we can enjoy um, that kind of thing. So we've gone to screen, we've gone to screen time. We could instead go to lighten. We can go to lighten time and you can see that behaves a little bit differently. I mean, if you want to get crazy, we could go to add time and now it's like glowing. <laughs> But you'll definitely want to, you'll definitely want to probably play with your opacity here as you start to manipulate that. So there you go. Those are three kind of uh, ways that we might try some, some fog. We might try to make some fog happen out here. So various methods, various forms, various ways. Okay. I think, I think we've done probably enough that's probably enough fog. I hope that's enough ideas for you to play around and, and make some fog of your own. But, 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 there were two other things that I promised and we've, we've got, I think we've got time to do both of them. The first one I want to do, and this shouldn't take too long, is these stars out here. So the stars, as they originally came to us, are simply this layer here, this stars layer right here. Now I'm, I'm clicking this solo button so we only see the stars. Now unfortunately these stars are very banal and as you know these are these are burning balls of gas somewhere out in the universe projecting light through time to us. The, the majesty of that of that particular complex process kind of lost on a bunch of little dots. Let's see if we can do better. Okay I'm gonna go here and go layer new solid Everyone likes to make a new solid. I'm going to make sure it's the comp size, and this is going to be a white solid, okay? And I'm going to rename this. I'm going to rename this to be the star field. This is going to hold the stars that I want to put in the sky. And hit OK. Now, we're going to make this happening. Oh, we're going to make this happening. Yikes, Evan. We're going to make this happen using a particle system. Now, please, please, don't... Uh, don't be scared. Particles are our friend. In vanilla After Effects, even with just the basic install of After Effects, we get we get a few particle systems to play with. Okay, we have CC Particle System, CC Particle World, something called Particle Playground. So we can kind of drag these out and see if these are interesting things that we want to play with. So at their default, they kind of look a little bit weird, right? That looks a little weird. So that's Particle Playground, that's how it starts. Here's CC Particle World. Here's what it looks like. And something really cool about Particle World is look at this little icon up here in the world, right? 
And this this little icon here, this little this little um, 3D box, that means that this is going to respect your cameras. So you notice you can kind of see this little grid down here that's sliding. Well, that's because it's respecting the camera. We are seeing it through the camera's eyes. Okay, that's CC Particle World. And then we've got CC uh, CC Particle Systems. So let's go down here, and drop that on CC Particle Systems Two, the sequel. CC Particle Systems. Notice it does not have it does not have that little um, box on here, which for me is perfectly fine because the stars in this case are just kind of a static background element. They are not going to be responding in 3D. Okay, so let's go with CC Particle Systems, and right away it doesn't look anything like we want, which is of course frustrating. But we can start to tweak this to make it how we want. I'm going to start by going into the particle. I'm going to change us from looking at a line. As you can see, these are all little, little motion lines. I'm going to change it to lens convex. Now, changing it to lens convex has created a bunch of white circles because this is a totally white layer. So when we look through a convex lens, it makes white circles. I'm going to change the birth size to be something like 0.1 and the death size to be something like 0.2. This means that when these particles are created, when they're birthed into the world, they come in at this 0.1 size. When they die, when they leave the world, they're going to be 0.2. Now, what's kind of interesting here is that you can kind of chart that course, right? We know from this longevity that each particle will only live for two seconds, and we're going to be birthing them at 0.4 or at four uh, something units. They don't, they don't write the units in here, and that's too bad. Um, but let's have a look at what they're doing. We're getting closer. Okay, it's belching stuff everywhere. Okay, probably not what I'm into yet. Let's go into the physics, because the physics is something we need to change about this. Explosive, right? This is explosive. This is West Coast. Um, so <laughs> uh, that's, uh, that's a joke for me. Um, the velocity we're going to bring down to zero. We don't need any velocity, and we don't need any gravity either, right? Because we're in space. And now everything's kind of bunched on top of each other. Oh, oh, that's no good. So let's go into the producer, and let's make the producer wider and taller. And now we have a big, big circular plane of, of stars coming out here. And now let's adjust it uh, vertically to be up here. So how about now? Okay. We are now we've got that going on, so maybe uh, the birth rate needs to come down. Let's bring that down to like one. Ooh, is that still good? Okay, that's kind of good. Actually, let's go down to 0.5, fewer stars. Let's make it things live a little longer so the stars hang out a little longer. And now let's keep refining. We just keep refining this until we get to where we want to go. It, looks, it does look kind of like a bubble fountain. Um, so we can go into maybe... Um, the particles themselves, and let's have them both fade in and fade out. Get a little softer there, okay. Let's make them smaller. Let's try to make them closer to the original animation here, or the original design, right? Let's start them at 0.1 and have them go away at 0 0.02, right? 0 0.01, 0 0.02, okay, maybe 0 0.05 so they get larger and they go away. Things are getting twinkly now, folks. We're getting twinkly now. Awesome, I'm feeling this. So it's subtle, but you can see it. I'm gonna bring that longevity down to two so that I can get, I can experience more twinkling faster. Great, now here's the other thing to look for. This, um, this thing takes a while to ramp on, right? So we start at nothing and then we're moving ahead and suddenly everything's on. In fact, it takes a whole two seconds before we're into what feels kind of like a loop. So what we can do here is simply grab this layer and drag it back in time so that we don't have to deal with that kind of preloading part, that we just start with this thing kind of being active. And now we've got some pretty basic little twinkly stars up there, which I think is pretty good. It's not terrible. Um, so uh, the quest question here from Sean, can we adjust these to make some big and some small? So inside the particle, 
we've touched the particle type, we've touched the birth size, we've touched the death size. Here's something we can touch as well, the size variation. So we can make them more varied in size. So if we want them all to be um, exactly the same size, then we can bring that down to zero, so no variation. Or you can bring it up to 100%, having 100% variation, meaning we're gonna be we're gonna be like plus minus on this thing in a big way. Okay, so in terms of making them um, closer to us or further from us, uh, that is uh, some, something we're gonna be a little bit more limited with, right? So this is our size. We call it size variation here in this zone. Um, so hopefully that uh, that makes sense. Something else to check out in here. We can we can we can alter all kinds of interesting things. If you don't like this arrangement of stars, well, hold on, let me find one that you might like. Uh, do you like this? How about, how about that one? Is this one better? So you can just <laughs> roll through the random seed until you find an arrangement of stars you like. But CC Particle Systems Two, the sequel, um, CC Particle Systems One, Return to Paradise, CC Particle Systems Three even more particles. Um, please let me know what you think the sequel to CC Particle Systems would be. Um, I'd love to know what subtitles you would put on it. But it's not the most advanced particle system, uh, which is kind of why in the getting started I like to I like to get people started with this one. Because um, it introduces you to some of the core concepts of particles early, like birth rate, longevity, um, these changes over the life of a particle. So hopefully that kind of makes a little bit of sense. This kind of has, this has kind of the bare bones, the barest things that you would want from a particle system. So I hope that, um, I hope that that makes sense. In more advanced particle systems, if you want to get really wacky, you can get into things like collisions and forces and, oh boy, it, it goes crazy with, uh, with CC, um, with, with, uh, with particles. There are so many, um, there are so many, um, I want to say, like, um, different systems, different third-party systems, and sometimes um, <laughs> you, you can dip into all sorts of things. Um, uh, oh, yeah, maybe it's CC Particle Systems for the God Particle, um, <laughs> Return of Higgs Boson. Um, that could be something. But, yeah, so there are many, many ways, and often... Um, often what we do here with CC particle systems is it starts to form the base of stuff. So check this out. We could drop more things on this. We could, we could add more layers to our sandwich. Um, what do you think? What do you think? We add a glow here, a stylized glow. Bloop. So now these are all a little bit glowy and let's see, let's see, let's get that glow radius going up a little bit. Uh-huh, uh-huh, and get that intensity a little bit here, just so that we can probably enjoy, you know, getting a little bit more intensity out of this stuff. Now, maybe glow is not for you. Maybe you would prefer a Haussian blur, a, uh, a real home-style blur out here. So maybe we can blur these out to try to try to get that going. So we can do all sorts of wonderful things. <laughs> oh, man. We could, oh, Sean, we could put a drop shadow on here. That's an interesting thing to put on stars. Um, that could be strange. Um, wonder what would happen then. Let's first see them in context. Let's see what our work and see how we've done, how that looks here on the, on the pre-dawn sky, right? How that looks out in this zone. So now we can kind of enjoy our work in context and then we can decide uh, how that's going. Oh, what what is up? Uh, what is up, Sharon from Ontario? Hello. Where, whereabouts in Ontario, Sharon? Let me know. I'm up. Uh, I'm up in Ottawa, so it's always great. Um, and hello, hello, Cedric. Um, and Norman, Norman, pod racing is the greatest addition to the Star Wars canon. I will accept no complaints. Uh, <laughs> generated the greatest, greatest racing video game of all time. So at least the prequels are, are prequels, Star Wars prequels are good like that. Now this is pod racing. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, good stuff. <laughs> All right, so let's see. I mean, there is call to see what happens when you put a drop shadow on top of these stars. So drop. Here we go. Drop shadow, what happens when you do that? 
and you end up with this stuff, um, which is a little bit weird, but you can go ahead and you can make this a light colored drop shadow. You can bring the distance down to zero. You can bring the softness up. Um, and let's see if we can bring the opacity up. Now, here's a question. Well, why do you think we don't see much when we do this, right? Um, so we can we can try to bring that up so we get a little bit of a little bit of a thing out of it. Drop shadow kind of is operating on um, drop shadow is operating on alpha, right? Um, oh boy, you know what? Now we're really now we're really going into the weeds. Drop shadow operates on the alpha of a layer, whereas the glow would operate by I guess by saying like how light or dark a layer is. But it's interesting that if this were sort of a more abstract piece, you may have to, and I only mention this here so that, um, I only mention this here because sometimes you're gonna use an effect that is not for its kind of intended, um, its intended use. So it's called drop shadow, but you could end up uh, doing something totally different, right? Uh, yeah, so there we go, that's drop shadow. And yeah, again, we might use a different blending mode to kind of pop, 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 pop. Look, we changed this to add and it really pops. It really pops. So now we're gonna just blur that a little bit and we are gonna bring the opacity of this entire layer down just a smidge like so. And we don't need those original stars. Get out of here, original stars. We did better. We've done, we've moved on. We've moved on from you original stars. So there we go. Now we've got some twinkly, twinkly stars up in the sky. And I think that's pretty cool. One thing I'll say is that uh, we can see them through this mountain. <laughs> Oops. So I'm just gonna push them vertically a little bit like that. So no problem. No harm, no foul. Um, but yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. Let's dip into the final little bit of nuance that I wanted to throw in this thing. We are together for another, another half hour or so. So let's see, uh, let's see what we can do. Oh, and, uh, I'm glad to, I'm glad people are really enjoying the stuff that we're, we're putting out here. Um, uh, hold on, I gotta mm, scratch my eye a little bit. Oopsie doodle, I should not touch my face, but here we are. So if there is wind moving through, if there is wind moving through the space here, uh, then what we're gonna need to do here um, is to, mm, we're gonna need to show that the trees are moving in an interesting way, right? So we could do that a few ways, right? We've got our trees here and I'm going to just solo one of these trees, this tree. I'm gonna turn on the uh, transparency grid so that, you know, we can see the dark tree against the dark background. Um, and we could always just rotate this tree. Whoa, I'm getting blown around, guys. Whoa, please don't chop me down. I'm a tree. Um, that you, you, we could do that. But trees tend to bend and sway a little bit. So I'm gonna try to um, show you some ideas that might um, might help you to make this tree bend and sway, all right? And the first one that I always wanna introduce people to is the puppet pin tool. The pin tool has come a long way uh, since its inception and I really recommend if you are someone who um, someone who works from Illustrator or you, you make a lot of things in, um, in Illustrator or Photoshop and you want to bring them into After Effects to animate them, you can get a lot of mileage out of the pin tool. So with a layer selected, we're going to grab the pin tool. We're gonna set some pins into this. Now, you do that just by clicking, try to click on the solid parts of your image. Don't, don't click out here, click, click in here in the solid parts. And let's see, I'm gonna try to stick one here. And you'll notice after a little bit of calculation, we now have this triangulated mesh on here. Let me really quickly just change this uh, to like a yellow here. And so now you can see, hopefully you can see the grid uh, or the mesh that has been added around this thing, okay? So now I'm gonna click again, I'm gonna add another point, ploop. And now I'm gonna add a third point up here near the tippy top, okay? So we are going to just go ahead and, and grab the top here and just kinda 
play around with that and we'll see if this is behaving how you like it right so here we go shifting it around so now this thing can kind of move around in interesting ways what's really interesting about the pin tool is that i can start to add sort of other little pins to get even more nuanced movement into bits of this tree if i so desired um and there, there's a lot of depth you can get out of out of this pin tool you can make some parts of the mesh uh, rigid, you can make some parts of it more malleable, you can make some parts of the mesh overlap other parts. Um, so uh, you can get a lot of mileage out of the pin tool and I really recommend that you check out some of Adobe's help file about the pin tool if you want to get sort of deeper into that. We're going to use it at kind of a very surface level uh, just for this. I just want to give you a little bit of a, a little soupçon, a little amuse-bouche uh, of this um, particular tool so that you can um, ha hopefully have some confidence to uh, go on and do some more stuff with it. So let's dive in here and what has this created, okay? Now, I saw it on Twitter. <laughs> I was on Twitter the other day. It's a good way to start anything. And someone was, was saying that so many things are hidden down here in in the, um, you gotta twirl down to see all the cool stuff, all right? And so this is no different. So if you twirl down into tree A, you'll see the effects zone, twirl into the effects, you'll see the puppet, twirl into the puppet. You'll see more things written down here than you see up here, right? So puppet engine, you see uh, mesh rotation refinement. Ooh, that's a mouthful. You see that up here. On transparent, we see that too. Auto traced shapes. Oh, interesting. Hmm, that's a fun thing. Now let's go in here into mesh one. We've created a mesh on here. That's what these triangles are when we started putting the pins. So this is the mesh. The density is sort of how many triangles this thing is putting, putting in there. So your density, we could go down to like a five, not very dense at all. This is This makes it a little bit easier to render, right? and you know fewer calculations we can make it up pretty high we can crank it up to 12 for example we end up with this situation very dense so if you have artwork that requires a little bit more precision in the mesh that's where you want to dial it in but this is a silhouette of a tree we're going to take it way down um, and we don't really need this point out here this this point was a bit of an oopsie so i'm just going to delete that because really i'm just going to move the top of the tree here and what I like about this is this pin down here is really holding things in place. It's holding where the bottom of the tree is because it grows out of the ground. This tree in the middle, th this point in the middle of the tree is going to act as a bit of a pivot. And so that as I bend and flex this thing, it's like providing rigidity to the trunk of the tree. And then the top here is going to waggle a little bit. And this movement is dragging some of the rest of the mesh around. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense for why we might, we'll just swat the mic there. Um, and that hopefully makes a little bit of sense about how we make use of and refine this thing. Now, how do we move this stuff around? Oh, we gotta go, <clears throat> we gotta go more layers deeper, all right? Mm. Okay, so let's go deeper in here. We go deeper still into the deform zone and you'll see that we have three pins, pin one, pin two, pin three. We can rename these, and I recommend you do, right? That we are going to rename this to be um, the top. We are going to rename this bottom one here. Hitting return with the thing selected, call this the trunk. Then we're gonna rename this one here in the middle, and we're gonna call this um, the support. <laughs> okay, so all we're really gonna do is we are gonna move these two around so we don't really need these two keyframes here we're going to get rid of those we don't we don't need them they're going to remain where they are and so over time what we're going to do is we're just going to move where this uh is okay so that as we're kind of moving by this might move a little bit in this direction it doesn't take much movement to to really sell kind of what's happening with this um you just have to be careful that you don't i mean you could end up making a very funny kind of la 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 kind of situation with these pins <laughs> which is totally cool too if that's if that's where your mind goes do it up um but yeah we, we're gonna try to create some subtle 
motion with this, kind of moving it back and forth. What I'm actually gonna do, because we've got these two things where the, the pin kind of moves over this way, and then we're just gonna move it back, copying and pasting these keyframes out a little bit like so, so that we've created kind of a, a, a few of them. We're gonna randomly just kind of shove these in either direction. Then we're gonna grab all of these things. I'm gonna hold down Alt, click on the last keyframe and squish, squish them in together. And then we are going to ease them all. We talked about easing yesterday. We are going to ease them all by selecting these keyframes and hitting F9, or we're going to right click keyframe assistant, easy ease them, that kind of thing. So now we can kind of see as we kind of go by the tree that it's, whoa boy, it's really getting thrown around, right? So these are kind of big movements. I don't, I don't know why I'm so cartoonish with my movements sometimes, but if you want to kind of get a bit more subtlety in your day, we can, we can kind of move it back. Whoa, just make sure that you're not bending too many points. <laughs> so just a heads up that if you need to kind of alter that down a little bit, you may need to, you may need to do that a little bit. But I love how this deforms the rest of the points um, and that you are able to have some interesting fine control uh, with that. Now, one little caveat I wanna point you to here, toggle my switches and modes, even though I'm putting the pins over here, you see that their information is being stored over here. Hmm, what's that all about? Why is the motion path here, but the pin is there? Well, it's, it's an interesting conundrum to run into because we're now dealing with 3D layers and 2D information and all that stuff. So things can get kind of um, confused, right? They can get confused a little bit and confusing. Just remember that this point is what's important. Don't pay too much attention to where these are for now. If you want to keep everything nice and organized, that's when we would want to be pre-composing things, keeping things together, um, and making sure that everything is isolated and, and that kind of a thing. But for today, this should help get you where you want to go. There was a suggestion, though, there's a suggestion in the chat that we use uh, something else for bends. Let's, t let's talk about bend it. Let's bend. Let's let's CC bend it. Let's give it a try. Why not? I'm I'm open to try some things on here. Wasn't in the lesson plan, but uh, let's try it. Let's try it on a different tree. What do you think? Uh, one of this tree. Let's get this tree going. So I'm going to solo this tree. I'm going to apply CC bend it on here, and oh boy, already we're off to a rough start. Rough start with this thing. But it's okay, it's okay. So with bend it, what you need to do is you need to place the end, the end point up near the logical end of the layer, right? And the beginning, you wanna place that towards the logical beginning of the layer. And then uh, we wanna bend. Bending, 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 bending. And of course, we're running into this little trouble here over at the edge where we are just bending it off the side. Um, and there are perhaps a few ways to get around this. Um, for example, um, let's see, hold on. Mm -hmm. We can do, oh, the extend bend isn't gonna get us there. We could, we could, uh, <laughs> okay, so hold on. Let me, let me, ugh, let me, let me start my spiel over again. <clears throat> What we'll probably want to do with this, before we bend it like Beckham here, we are gonna to wanna to take this tree and probably pre-compose it. So this is gonna help take some of the ambiguity and the strangeness away, because a lot of these effects are not meant to work in a 3D environment, they were designed for a 2D environment, so, or a 2.5D environment. But let's go ahead and take this layer then. We talked about pre-composing, let's do that. So I'm gonna go Command-Shift-C, pre-compose. And yesterday, yesterday, we talked about these two options here. Leave all the attributes here or move all the attributes into the new composition. We are going to choose to leave all of the attributes here. Now, by attributes, we mean the fact that this layer is 3D, the fact that it lives here where it lives. So if I leave all of the attributes here and hit OK, I've now gone into the two-dimensional environment, okay? If I go back here, everything looks pretty much the same, except this is now a beige box, right? So pre-composing in that first way is that, uh, is, is fixing up this problem here that this 
thing here was in a 3D space, was a little bit uncontrollable. Now we're going to take this thing and we're going to do some work inside, but everything we, we worked up here for the, the, the 2D stuff, all of this 3D parallaxing, that's all still the same, right? But tree B, we can now manipulate it here in this zone. Okay, I hope that, hope that makes sense. So now we can go ahead and we can try to bend this thing in here. Now we've, we're, oh, we've got a little similar problem coming on, right? What's going on with that? Well, how about, how about, how about this? We could take this whole comp and we can make it a little bit bigger if you'd like. But here, let's let's just see. Now, does it make sense now why we were kind of clipping at the edges, right? So let's go ahead, let's take this and what we're gonna do with this situation, we're gonna go composition settings. We can make the comp a lot wider. And you think, well, maybe that'll fix it for us. Maybe, maybe that'll fix it, you know? You never know. Let's just give ourselves a little extra space. Oh, sorry. Let's let's give ourselves even more space. That's not going to illustrate the the full extent of the situation out here. There we go. So, let's try that bend again. Oh, we're still running out of space. Now, why is that? Why are we running out of the space? Well, it's because we're pushing the layer sort of beyond its alpha bounds. This little buddy here, this collapse transformations is making the ma magic possible for us, right? So collapsing the transformations, taking that infinite scalability of a vector layer into this space. Now look at us, we can bend it beyond this bound here, willy and nilly without a single qualm to be had. Now granted, this is a pretty extreme bending of a tree, right? Wow, we're really bending. But if this is what you desire, here is a solution to that problem. Hopefully that hopefully that makes sense with the bending. Um, I love that I love these the definition of extended and it's either legal or it's extended. That's that's I don't know why that's funny, but it's just a weird kind of word to to put in there. Anyway, anyway, that's my that's my bend it spiel. I hope that helps people who may be having trouble with the bend it, um, who are not bending it good, who are having troubles with bending. Um, your water bending, your earth bending, your fire bending, um, all of your various avatar bending problems. Hopefully this solves some of them. But as you can see out here, that bend is preserved. <laughs> what an excellent bend, right? Because the bend is happening in the 2D space. Now we're back in the 3D space and this thing is just hanging out bent, bent over as we wanted, I suppose. It doesn't, this looks so weird. Um, I'm, just, I'm gonna bend it inward and we'll see if that's funny, right? We're still gonna run into the edge, right? If you run into the edge of, the, of, of this comp, you run into the edge of the comp, but you know, you can extend that comp, you can do all kinds of things. So anyway, <laughs> that's another way to bend and manipulate uh, the trees. So hopefully that um, is good and it makes sense um, and that uh, that is that is fun for, for everyone to enjoy. Anyway. Um, so, 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 um, what to do, what to do, because I know we've only got a little bit of time left, um, with each other. Um, so what I would like to do is just do a little, little recap, because I know people were coming in a little bit late. I know people were, were coming in here, uh, maybe missed some of the first stuff. So let me just kind of recap, uh, what's going on, what we've done, where we've been, and, uh, then we'll send you on your way to the other activities here, folks. So. Mm -hmm. ah, take a little, little dash of dash of liquid in here and let's get into it. So what did we do today? Well, we started we started from yesterday's work and we started to add more layers of interest out here. We played around with some new fog, some interesting uh, foggy effects that we might get into. In fact, we looked at many ways of generating fog and I hope that you enjoyed it. Um, that uh, we could end up here. So we made some foggy time. Um, we made multiple versions of fog and we layered them in here. So originally, the original fog was really just these blobs floating around, right? Cool blobs, I like the blobs, but I thought we could do a little bit better. And so we went with some more generative fog by creating a composition and then working inside this composition to generate 
using some of the basic generation tools that we get into, we made some fractal fog here that we made out of some fractal noise and we are simply offsetting, we're pushing that fractal noise through the space here, right? So if we wanted to sort of offset, offset where that is, so we can go there, we could go here and we can push this fractal through, wee, there it goes, it's, it's rolling along right? And we're evolving it, right? We're evolving it as it goes by, you know, we're changing it. So it looks like it's rolling and changing over time. And that has produced some lovely fractal fog. I think that's a great use of fractal noise. But if you prefer a more abstract approach, we worked up one that simply makes use of multiple wave warps on top of each other. The wave warp is so good, so contemporary. People love wave warps. And by combining two of them, we end up with this pretty varied look here. Now, if you if you want to go even even crazier, why don't you get a third in the mix, right? We can always <laughs> you can always have more, um, and then things are looking even more ghostly out here. So you know it's uh, it's up to you how wackadoo you want to get with your wave warps. Keep adding them, uh, keep combining them, and that gave us this warpy bacon fog. I kind of liked bacon fog. But not content with bacon fog, we added up, we added in uh, some turbulent displace. So we can use some turbulent displace to make some fog. Ooh, yes, and really, really, if you want to get wild with this, like we say, you can always create more. We can always have more bacon fog. So let's see, let's make a, a thin strip of bacon and then a thicker strip of bacon here. And then let's see, we can go into the, the options here, give us a different random seed. So now we got we got double bacon happening. You know, you can layer on. <laughs> I, I apologize to everyone who um, who does not eat meat. I don't eat, eat a lot of meats myself. Um, but, uh, you know, you can you can do all kinds of interesting things layering on your bacon fog um, as it crispifies out here. I used to eat a lot of it. Bad for my heart. No longer. No longer as meaty as I used to be. Um, and then we thought, well, hey, let's combine the wave warp with the displacement. And then we end up here with, I guess, the ultimate uh, abstract fog. Congratulations. That's how we get there. And the turbulent displace actually behaves a lot like the fractal, right? So I hope that that kind of kind of makes sense uh, to folks that uh, that is is a way to create variation and change here uh, as we push things along. Okay, then that the next thing we did, which I think was very smart and very interesting of us, because we are smart and interesting people. Hold on, I'm just gonna dial this down a little bit so we can enjoy our abstract fog out there in the world. We made some stars. We made some some wonderful stars. Felix, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna eat turkey bacon. That stuff is dry. Anyway. <laughs> I'm gonna turn my back on my pork producing ancestors. Um okay. <laughs> so um let's go in here. Uh Oh Norman, I don't know if I, I don't know if I can do that, man. That's your you, Norman. You're a you're a stronger man than I am. Um, can't give up my leather goods. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so let's uh, let's talk about the stars. Let's talk about the stars. Let's talk about space. Um, and um, what we what we did here is we took a look at the existing stars. You know what? Hats off to anyone who's who's able to live rigid, rigid dietary lives lifestyles. You know, I I love it. Um, so we took a look at the original stars and we said we can do better. We can do better. We can always do better. So we made a star field out of CC particle systems two revenge of the particle, um, or I guess uh, re return. Uh, oh, bake, bake the turkey bacon. Don't fry it. Okay, well, I'll give it a try. Um, so I actually don't eat a lot of breakfast these days. So CC Particle Systems 2 is the one we went at. We, I know you have many choices uh, when it comes to, many choices when it comes to particles. And in fact, as someone who seems to just collect particle systems around here, I have many to choose from. There are many third party ones, but, 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 but good people installing After Effects here. Your vanilla After Effects has three to choose from that are all pretty cool. So actually, you know what? There's a few others that are particle systems where they don't get listed here. Um, 
Uh, let's see. Bubbles, like a lot of these are technically particle systems. Is it in this bin? Uh, anyway, anyway, there's, uh, there's some things. So we went with uh, particle systems two, a kind of two-dimensional... Um, a kind of two-dimensional particle system. We played around with the birth size, the longevity, because when this stuff comes in, it looks like this. This is how particles look when they show up. Um, a little bit intimidating, not exactly what we're looking for. So with a little bit of tweaking, we eventually arrived at this totally different looking situation here, right? And then after we, we tweaked the physics a lot, we tweaked the producer a lot, we tweaked the particle a lot, um, we eventually arrived at where we wanted to go, which is this star field, which we then set to add, hanging out over top of our, our early morning sky, we end up with this beautiful thing. And then we were not, we were not content to just sit on this stuff, no, 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 we had to, we had to get these trees in motion, and one of the first ways we talked about getting trees in motion here was using the Puppet Pin Tool. Now, the Puppet Pin Tool, very powerful. I really recommend you check them out and uh, you do some stuff with it. Um, you can play around and manipulate all the points. You can have these fun dancing trees if you want. You can get as wacky and silly with this uh, as you desire. But the Puppet Pin Tool is really powerful for deforming and animating artwork. So I would really recommend you check that out if that is part of part of your lifestyle that you want to get into, that's part of your creative process, Puppet Pin Tool is going to be your friend in a big way uh, when it comes to, to animating things, just bringing these, this stuff to life. I really recommend you get into that in a deeper capacity. We literally only used it to set pins to control the trunk, tamp down the, tamp down the middle of this, this tree, and then waggle the top as the wind blows it around. So that's really all we were doing with that, which is okay. Um, and then there's a request, we've got a request from the audience, and we, we do like to honor requests to use CC Bend It, uh, to, to bend it like Beckham over here, which has its own challenges and limitations, and then we overcame some of those challenges kind of in a big way, so if you want to watch more of that, check out the replay and uh, get back, uh, get back to that stuff, um, so hopefully that was great. And all of this started, all of this project started from some stock assets that we grabbed off of Adobe stock. So I highly recommend checking out the wonderful layered vector stuff there. I personally am not much of an artist. Shocking, I know, because I even have a, a glowing wall behind me. But I am I'm not a super artistic person. Uh, drawing things, drawing scenes, um, not a bit. Usually I'm, I'm getting artwork from, from other people somewhere else in the production pipeline. And then I'm making that stuff move. Um, if you've, if you've seen the things that I draw, you'll, you'll know why. Um, and so this is a great, uh, a great thing that is hopefully, uh, hopefully good and hopefully useful to people. Um, if you are, uh, if you're an artist or if you're an illustrator, I hope this has helped, uh, helped you get into how you might add some depth. Speaking of depth, we got a pretty big depth chart here, uh, here on the day. This is kind of the first stream of the day here on Adobe Live. So I did want to mention really quick, uh, before we before we jump off and we go to other things, there are other things coming up today that you're going to love. Um, we've got daily creative challenges in Photoshop, creative challenges coming up in uh, in Illustrator, in XD. We've got uh, hand lettering by Steffi Lin coming up uh, coming up in a little bit. So you're going to learn a lot in uh, Fresco, Adobe Fresco, uh, one of the newer apps. I think you'll enjoy. Um, we're gonna we're gonna have some mobile app design in XD. Saw some love for XD in the chat, so that's great. And then coming up at 2.30 um, Pacific time, it's going to be Doodle Therapy with Alice Lee and Ryan Putnam. So uh, you're going to want to stick around for a rich full day of activities here. I love the community here on Adobe Live. I love the community here on Behance. If you want to watch these back, they are archived for all time and all space. If you are watching this, if you're watching this on YouTube, why don't you come on over to behance.net slash live so we can see in the chat, we can interact with you there. I wanna, I wanna be able to help people if I can. So do the other hosts of this stuff. So it's fantastic. So um, all this stuff, all this stuff will live forever, uh, forever on these platforms. So you're gonna, you're gonna love that stuff. Um, I've been Evan Abrams. I guess I continue to be Evan Abrams. If you wanna find me on the internet, I'm at EC Abrams in all the places. 
If you have questions about After Effects, uh, slide into my DMs. Um, I, I keep those open on Twitter, on Instagram, um, and uh, also here on Behance. So you can actually message me on here if you'd like. Um, trying to think what else what else is kind of important going on there's a whole week of activities here on adobe live so i really recommend uh you check that stuff out um you're all so very welcome uh, uh you know it's it's a lot of fun for me to do this stuff and uh you know as long as people keep showing up we'll keep doing it so hopefully you enjoy this getting started series in in adobe after effects and uh I hope that it's all good. So thanks again for watching. I'm going to, I'm going to sign off here and get along with my day, but uh, do stick around on Adobe live. There's way more stuff for you to get into and I think you will enjoy. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, see, see me on Friday. Uh, it'll be Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. I'm, I'm streaming on the weekends on Behance. So we'll, we'll see then. So, you know, be creative, uh, stay safe, be kind to each other and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye for now.